Hello, welcome to the Thursday, June 20th, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storms and its Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Washington, D.C. Oracle today released a special out-of-band security bulletin regarding a new vulnerability in WebLogic. Just like prior vulnerabilities in WebLogic, this is an XML decoder deserialization vulnerability again and can to lead to arbitrary code execution. It actually appears to be, well, yet another version of this vulnerability. We have seen uh, quite a number of them in WebLogic uh, already so far. They tend to be pretty easy to exploit and this particular issue was apparently already exploited in the wild. Oracle has released patches for most versions of WebLogic, apparently 12.2.1.3 is still waiting for a patch, but by the time you're listening to this, the patch may already be available. As far as the overall risk goes, uh, Shodan actually only sees about 2,000 to 3,000 different exposed WebLogic servers. At this point, I would think that most serious users of WebLogic have gotten the message that it's not a good idea to expose these systems directly to the internet. The ones that are exposed, I would guess, are probably already exploited because we do see a large number of exploit attempts against our honeypots. Whether or not these exploit attempts are this latest vulnerability or one of the prior ones is difficult to tell. The endpoints uh, are the same. They're being attacked here and the vulnerabilities are similar enough where it can be difficult to distinguish the different exploit attempts. And then we got an interesting log snippet from a reader's mail server. Now, this mail server isn't running XM, but still was attacked using the recent XM vulnerability. This is the vulnerability that's also known as Return of the Wizard that has been known for about two weeks now and has pretty much been exploited as soon as the vulnerability became known. But so far attackers have focused on XM mail servers and typically it's pretty easy to tell what kind of mail server is running on port 25. The mail server will return a banner typically identifying itself. Now what we started seeing the last couple days is more and more attacks against mail servers that do not run XM. Now, there are two possible explanations for this. The first one is that the attackers, they just don't care or they're thinking that some XM administrators may actually have changed the banner but are now identifying themselves as a different mail server in order to not have to patch. The other and uh, maybe more likely almost explanation is that the attempt here is to actually have the exploit forwarded to a vulnerable mail server that's not directly exposed to the internet. Not really sure how likely this scenario is. Most organizations sort of try to stick with uh, one particular mail server, but it's certainly possible that this will get a couple more systems added to whatever botnet they're building here. We haven't been able yet to download the actual code they're trying to install here. The couple detects that we had so far, the respective web servers that delivered the code that's being installed here were actually no longer reachable or the code was no longer available. It also looks like there is a slight typo in the exploit, which may also render the exploit non-working unless uh, the intention here is to somehow have the T character here decoded into a space. And then just a quick status update on the TCP selective acknowledgement vulnerabilities. Uh, no exploit available yet as far as I can tell. I just checked before starting uh, the recording here. So make sure that you either disable selective acknowledgement or you're applying the kernel patch. Of course, in most cases, you will have to reboot your system in order to make sure that the patch is applied. 
And I know most of you are not able to attend Science Fire this weekend. Uh, for example, you missed out on a great presentation by Boyan earlier uh, this evening, explaining all the details about the Poodle and uh, Breach attacks in SSL version 3. Well, uh, we are preparing the slides uh, to have them posted on the website. If you're going to the presentation section of the site, you should see the slides show up in the next couple days. And that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.